Hey guys, it's Peter Jordan, Lost Angler, and tonight what we're going to tie is the V-Chain Seducer. Let's put this up where you can see it. Really cool little fly. It uh, does a great job of being a shrimp, of being a mud minnow, of just emulating a ton of different fish. And you can use, or baits, you can use any combination of colors you want to in this fly. You can change it up however you want to. This is a good, simple pattern where you only need a couple of materials and you can make a wonderful fly. I would say this fly is kind of like the... How do I put it? Uh, I think it's kind of like the woolly booger. The woolly booger of salt water, to be honest. It's a, a great little fly. Catches just about everything. Really easy to tie. It's a great fly for salt water beginners. And it kind of builds a foundation for all the other different kinds of flies you're going to end up tying. So, stick with me. Let's take a look at it. Again, it's going to take about 15 minutes from start to finish. Good to go. Alright, to get started on bee chain seducer, the first thing we're going to start with is liquid refreshment. You can get a powerful thirst when you're tying flies. Because I spent all my money on fly tying equipment. That's all I can afford. But that's okay. Oh, it's genetic. Alright, so starting off, we're going to use a size 4 Gamakatsu B10S hook. I really like this size hook. Um, even though this is for redfish and speckled trout, I've never had trouble with the B10S. Um, and I feel like personally, from my experience, I like this hook better than their saltwater series hook because I feel like for me, the smaller wire penetrates easier and it's a little bit less work. Next, we're going to use large B chain eyes. So nothing to it there. And for our thread, we're going to use clear nylon thread. Uh, this is the same kind of thread you can pick up at the Wally World or the Hobby Lobby or whatever. And all it is is just clear nylon. And the cool thing about it is I only have to have one color thread. For every fly I'm ever going to tie. So I start wrapping about halfway down the hook shank. And I'm going to get ready to put thread bump right about here for my eyes. Now I'm tying this with bead chain and I'm tying this in a place uh, you can use lead eyes if you want to. I'm using bead chain because the fly is not falling fast enough to hit the bottom and bounce on it. I'm just wanting to get in front of the fish and get their attention. I also use this a lot on the dock lights in the early spring and during the winter when you have a lot more of the brown shrimp in the bay. But this fly when you're done it looks like a, a bull minna. It looks like a it's just a great general pattern. I mean, it's a bull man, it's a shrimp, you name it, it seems to do a really great job. There we go. Now, for our first material to go on, we have good old fashioned twinkle trim found at Hobby Lobby on sale after Christmas for like 25 cents. This has a really good pearlescence to it. I'm gonna be a little bit heavy handed with it. I'm just gonna put it on the hook. Wrap it a few times, then I'm going to take it, just pull it back. Nice and easy. Now, can you use uh, a flash of boo or something? Sure, go for it. Uh, this is just cheaper, and it works fine. And then I'm just going to cut it, taper it. Up and down. And I like the crinkle part because it seems like it kind of has that 
I don't know, buggy feel. It makes it feel more shrimpy to me. Next, we're going to use Whiting's Bugger Pack. This is the uh, Barred Dark Ginger, any color you want. I've already pulled some pieces off for us. And I generally do try to match them up. If they were close together, I try to do that. So I'm going to measure it off the hook shank. I don't want a very big fly. That's about all I want. Pull the excess away. Give it a trim. Nothing to it. Now, you can do it out like this, or you can do it in. I tend to time mine so that the, they curve inward. All right, I'm take this out on there. If my stems are sticking out past my eye, I'll just trim them off. Because uh, that can make them turn. And what I found for myself is that just nice, easy, loose wraps start so I can make sure it's laying the way I want it to. Then I'll tighten down. There we go. And I'm gonna repeat this on the same the same methodology on the other side. Now, if your feathers don't lay perfectly flat, it's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. Um, these came together pretty nice, so I am pleased. But again, if they don't, after the first time the first fish hits it, it doesn't really matter. Next, I'm going to use medium uh, pearl palmer chenille. And I only want to do just a little bit, just to give a little flash under the fly and I don't want to go very I don't want to go too far up I like to make sure that my fibers are all in agreement going the same way does it make a huge difference? It can. And just go back and forth till you figure out the way it wants to palmer for you. And I don't want to go super tight with this because this will actually hold a lot of air. And I don't really want it to hold a lot of air. That's about it. So, it's easier to work with a big piece. You can always trim it off. And if you're going to tie a few flies, then that's not a big deal. You can just use this piece on the next one, which we will. All right. Happy flies. All right, next. Again, dark ginger. Here, I pulled off some more. I've got two pieces, and what I like to do with these guys is I like to lay them flat against one another, trim them off so they're the same length. And then what I'm going to do is see this? I'm going to take this and pull down. There we go. Alrighty. Once I've done that, I'm going to come in, tie this on, take my excess, trim it off.
We're just going to palm her forward. As we palm her forward, just pull your feather, your fibers back. Just go easy so everything gets out of everybody's way. Trim off our excess. Here, we have to trim your thread off. And I get out of the way. Bingo. Very nice. Now we're going to come up past the eye a little bit. Tie this off. Now some people like to use a whip finish. I like to use a double half hitch. The simple fact of the matter is the head cement or the loon you're going to put on or the hardest nails or whatever, that's actually what's going to hold it. So do whatever makes you happy. Boom. There we are. So now all you gotta do is head seam in it up. I'm gonna use a little bit of loom. Done. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, I am so sorry it's been so long since I've uh, done any fly tying videos. Um, we're gonna get back into it. We're gonna get back to doing some uh, cool flies. We're going to do some, uh, some of my personal patterns that I've come up with and some of the more uh, standard run-of-the-mill patterns that really work for everybody, I think. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to shoot for this. Um, fingers crossed. I would like to say once a week, but I'm just going to say a lot more regular. Yeah, so um, stick around. Keep an eye on the channel. Uh, the dealership that I'm at, we just brought on a new line of boats. It's Ginu. Ginu and custom Ginu. So I really, really like these little boats. I'm really excited to get them in. We should see them here in the next month. So we're going to be doing videos on that. Uh, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to show you guys how these boats are laid out for the different models. Like the 15.4, 15.6 Classic, LT10, LT25, all the different stuff. So we'll take a look at them. And uh, hopefully we can do some good walk arounds, some days on the water, and uh, see about maybe putting one and seeing if we can't catch some vicious redfishes with it. So stick around, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed what you saw, hit the like button, hit subscribe. If you have questions, make comments, whatever you need to do. And uh, we're still going to continue to do, I say we like there's somebody with me. I'm still going to continue to do uh, your electronics videos. Uh, I don't know how much of the Garmin we're going to do uh, for a little while. I'm probably going to con concentrate more on the smaller stuff like Lowrance. <laughs> I'm saying Lawrence doesn't make bigger stuff, but it's a little bit easier if you uh, have a small boat. So, like I said, keep your eyes peeled. We're going to do some more videos. We're going to do more fly time. We're going to do boats. We're going to get back in electronics. Hopefully, we're going to get a lot better at posting, and we'll go from there. Thanks, guys.